Hello, BookTube. Well, I'm still feeling really, really, really bad. <laughs> so, so I'm kind of glad that the morning's mail is just two packages. Because uh, I don't, I don't really have the energy to do, uh, this thing, this, this thing has just attacked my energy levels. Every, everything feels like a strain. Uh, so we just have two packages here. We'll go through them. I'm going to hope, uh, that the, the, there's been a pattern. If you noticed, there's been a pattern. I've been sick now for three days and all three days, the mail halls have been trying their hardest to perk me up. There's been one Steve book after another. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of hoping that that's true. I know the odds are decreased if you just got two packages, but we'll, We'll give it a try and hope for the best. Uh, so we'll start with, with this one here. Uh, uh, it's just the two packages. Woo! <laughs> oh! <laughs> okay. All right, the pattern continues. Uh, this is due in late March, and this is uh, by Sophie Barnes, and it is the, infam the infamous Duchess. A Regency romance. <laughs> uh, and not just a Regency romance, but a Regency romance with Paul Marin on the cover. Mm. I am the world's foremost chronicler of Paul Marin. As some of you read, who've read years ago my highest rated series on my book blog, Steve Reads, In Bed with Paul Marin, will know perfectly well. I'll leave a link to some of those, some of those below. Uh, but what have we got here? Do I have a description of the infamous Duchess? Oh, look at that. She's got her hand on Paul Marin's chest. Uh, branded a money-hungry con artist for marrying the elderly Duke of Tremaine days before his death. Viola Cartwright has found refuge in her work at St. Agatha's Hospital. No one must know the painful reason behind her marriage. She steers clear of attachments until Henry Lowell, heir to Viscount Armswell, lands on her operating table after a duel. Charming and wickedly handsome, Lowell is one of London's most inveterate scoundrels, Yet he may not be all that he appears. <laughs> I'm sure he appears to be Paul Merritt. <laughs> oh, fantastic. All right. This puts a smile on my sick, sick face. <laughs> all right. So we have a Reese's Romance. That's a great way to start. Uh, we'll move on to this next one, and then we'll just wrap it up. It'll be a very, very short mail haul. Uh, what is that, baby? Uh, okay. All right. We saw this already. This is David Shields. This is a finished copy of Instructions for a Funeral. A collection of short stories by David Shields, where you have the manila envelope with the clasp, only it's shaped like a coffin. Uh, and it, it's it's all blurbs. Yeah, it's uh, the, the pub sheet is all blurbs. Uh, what can we do for blurbs? There's a Kirkus one. I swear I didn't write it. It's a... It means his fifth collection cements his reputation as one of the finest and most idiosyncratic practitioners of short fiction in contemporary literature. It's not exactly a crowded field. <laughs> In this magnificent book, oh, come now. Oh, come now, Seymour. <laughs> this, I almost unconditionally guarantee you, is not a magnificent book. <laughs> you ought to get out more. Uh, we find the stories of every one of us, absent and present, dislocated and connected, at the mercy of our history, comma, our narratives. Well, yes, right? <laughs> As opposed to what? <laughs> yes, of course. All those things are going to be true. Uh, those, are, those are sort of what we call bromides. <laughs> what, can we do anything better than that? Uh, following the publication of his acclaimed Man Booker-nominated novel, Histopia, David Means returns to his signature form, the short story. Uh, this book finds Means branching out beyond the explorations of trauma with which he is often identified, displaying his sly humor and inimitable way of telling tales that deliciously wind up to punch the reader in the heart. Inimitable means no one's ever done it that way before, and no one could possibly do it after. And I've read David Shields. <laughs> that is not true. Uh, where are we going here? The reader's just been punched in the heart. <laughs> here means pushes into new territory, writing with tenderness about fatherhood, marriage, a homeless brother, the nature of addiction, and the death of a friend at the hands of a serial killer nurse. Okay, all right, okay. Writing with tenderness. About fatherhood, yes. About marriage, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but probably not, because marriage will involve women. And David Shields does not write tenderly about women. <laughs> Hence the serial killing nurse at the end of this very sentence. <laughs> and, uh, and his writing about addiction is always a scorned lover, rather than just scorn. Uh, his writing about addiction is very what uh, the addiction community would call enabling. Uh, Means transmutes a fistfight in Sacramento into a tender, there's that word again, a tender lifelong love story. Two FBI agents on a stakeout in the 1920s into a tale of paternal urges and loss, 
a man's funeral instructions into a chronicle of organized crime, real estate ventures, and paranoia. Huh, okay. This is instructions for a funeral finds means writing at the height of his power. Okay, so this comes out in March. This is a March release. Yeah, this is early March. This is right around the corner. And I have the slim advance copy of this thing. Uh, and I've just been putting it off. So I won't do that anymore. <laughs> so that is it. That is our, our deathbed mail hall here. This is Instructions for a Funeral, collect short stories by David Means. Uh, and The Infamous Duchess by Sophie Barnes, with, uh, with no less than our very own Paul Marin on the cover. I'll have to remember to leave a link to some of my epic posts about him. <laughs> uh, but that's going to have to do it. For now, I'm, I'm going to piece these, these videos out so I don't exhaust myself. Uh, but I will see you soon. Thank you, Book 2.